principally because they failed to believe in Fatima. In the case of the anti-popes, the reasons are much more extreme. One is a precursor to Antichrist and prepares the way for Antichrist, and two of them are in fact Antichrist. In explaining the seven heads of the beast, who are the seven emperors who rule from Rome, chapter 17 of the Apocalypse tells us that the Antichrist is Emperor number 5 and Emperor number 7. We have demonstrated that Emperor number 5 is Paul VI and that Emperor number 7 is John Paul II. Therefore, according to the Apocalypse, Paul VI and John Paul II are the Antichrist. Antichrist is one animating spirit who occupies two persons. This correlates with the prophecies of sacred scripture, but especially significant is the fact that, in our opinion, one cannot separate the cessation of the continual sacrifice from the Antichrist. It is evident from the aforementioned section on the Maccabees that the new mass, which involves a table upon and over against the true altar of God, is the abomination of desolation. One cannot separate the new mass from the Antichrist, according to the prophet Daniel. Strength was given him against the continual sacrifice. Paul VI was the person who instituted the abomination of desolation and caused the cessation of the daily continual sacrifice, the holy sacrifice of the mass, in most of the world, thus fulfilling Daniel's prophecy about the Antichrist. Moreover, just as Christ had a precursor, someone who prepared the way for him, named John, so does Antichrist have a precursor named John. What occurred later could not have happened without the preparation of John the 23rd, Emperor number 4, and his convention at Vatican II. If John the 23rd was the forerunner of the Antichrist, it would make sense that John Paul II would say the following about John the 23rd. He was a great gift of God because he rendered the church living for the man of today. He was, like the Baptist, a precursor, further buttressing that John the 23rd was, and knew himself to be, a precursor of Antichrist, much like St. John the Baptist was a precursor of Christ, is the following quote. He, John the 23rd, had only tried to be accommodating, never claiming to be himself the light, but only the herald of the light. In this quote, we clearly have John the 23rd appropriating to himself the language that St. John the Apostle uses with respect to St. John the Baptist. St. John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to give testimony of the light that all men might believe through him. He was not the light, but was to give testimony of the light. When Paul VI was elected, his name appeared for the first time in Catholic history as follows. Paul VI, 21636. Paul VI also had an interesting way of curling his P's in his signature, so that when you turn it upside down, you get three sixes. This is a medal of John Paul II. Notice the three stars with six points each, which gives you six, six, six. In his book, Windswept House, Malachi Martin reports that on June 29, 1963, the day prior to Paul VI's coronation, a black mass was celebrated, and Satan was enthroned in the Vatican. This was the coronation of the Antichrist, whose reign was to begin immediately after. Martin also points out that Satanist tradition had long predicted that the time of the prince, that means the Antichrist, would be ushered in at the moment when a pope would take the name of the Apostle Paul. Let no man deceive you by any means, for unless there come a revolt first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and is lifted up above all that is called God, 
or that is worshipped, so that he sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself as if he were God. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in analyzing 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, says that the son of perdition referred to by St. Paul is the Antichrist. The term son of perdition that St. Paul uses only occurs in sacred scripture in one other place, where our Lord is speaking of Judas in St. John 17 verse 12. He refers to Judas as the son of perdition. St. Hilary of Poitiers says that from this we can know that, like Judas, Antichrist will be an apostate bishop. For those in doubt as to whether Judas was a bishop, read Acts 1 verse 16 and following. In analyzing 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4, where St. Paul says that the Antichrist sitteth in the temple of God, St. Hilary says that the temple of God is the church, and the word St. Paul uses for sit is a particular word meaning he, the Antichrist, will sit like he has every right to be there, and further, he will sit at the very pinnacle of the church. The Catholic Encyclopedia article on the Antichrist mentions that St. Bernard and others believe that the only way that the Antichrist could possibly deceive, if it were possible, even the elect, is by becoming an anti-pope. One whom the world at large believes is a true pope, but in actual fact is not. Our Lady of La Salette said, Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist further confirming that Antipope Paul VI and Antipope John Paul II are the Antichrist is Apocalypse 13 verse 11. And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Among the scholarly community, there is a dispute whether this word is lamb or ram. There is at least one major translation that renders the word ram. In our opinion, the passage should read, And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a ram, and he spoke as a dragon. If John Paul II and Paul VI are the Antichrist, then each one is a horn of the ram mentioned by St. John in the Apocalypse. Therefore, one would expect these two men to have certain things in common, a practice that is common to both Paul VI and John Paul II is the strange gesture of prostrating yourself on the ground and kissing the earth. As far as we know, Paul VI and John Paul II are the only two persons in history that have kissed the earth why do these two particular persons bow down before the earth? The answer is found in Revelation chapter 13 verse 11. And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a ram, and he spoke as a dragon. Yes indeed, Paul the sixth and John Paul the second prostrate themselves before the earth as an act of homage to the place for